Signs of the Southland, Monday, September 2nd, 2024. Welcome to your weekly dose of Georgia Tech numbers and narrative. My name is Akshay Schwarn, and joining me from the beautiful city of Atlanta, Georgia, are Jack Purdy and Maggie Dosser. How are you doing, party people? I partied all weekend in a field in Ohio and missed basically everything we're about to talk about. So I did all my homework in the car today to make sure I knew what the hell I'm talking about today. Maggie was at this game, though, so uh, she is uh, far more equipped than I am uh, today than <laughs> I usually am. <laughs> I was present, but I was um, I wouldn't say I'm more equipped by any stretch of means. It was a it was a very fun weekend on the flats between the opening of the volleyball season, the home opener for Georgia Tech football. So how about we get right into it? Georgia State 12, Georgia Tech 35. Jack, you said you did your homework on the, this one. So why don't I you did. give us the rundown? Let's do a quick rundown and not the two hour deep dive with no rundown like we did last week. Uh, but you should also listen to the two-hour deep dive, by the way. If you, if you if that. you want the most comprehensive, I think, analysis of that game, of the Florida State game, I think we have that, if we very well might. Anyways, the Marta Bowl, courtesy me. Uh, State's first drive, very explosive. Uh, they got to the one, but we had a nice four-down stop, including, I think, the best, one of the better tackles we'll see all year by Amari Harvey. It was back in the stadium. Did, how, what was that reaction in the stadium when he bone-crunched that guy at the one? So this is when I got in trouble for screaming. Oh in the no! Box. <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah, worth it. Good to know. Yeah. Okay, good. That was I, that was a great moment. Okay. Uh, anyways, they go for a fourth. We stop them. Um, we also punt on our first drive, but then when we punt, all right, on the Georgia State's first play, they botch the snap, turn that into a good converted touchdown from Jamal Haynes on a fourth and goal. Already two fourth and goals, and we're still in the first quarter. Uh, punts going back and forth until the middle of the second. Uh, Georgia State hit a fourth and two fade route on what a goal to go situation. Uh, that after we gave him too much yardage, um, but we at least forced the field goal on that, so we were up seven three. Uh, One note here: please stop throwing fade routes. It, I, I understand that it worked for Georgia State here, but stop, stop throwing fade routes. They're bad. Fade routes are hard. Uh, you gotta have you gotta have the guy for it. You gotta have the guy for it to like. You have to worth. have literally Calvin Johnson for this to be like an optimal <laughs> thing for you to do. And I, let me tell you, as, unless I have missed something on Georgia State's roster, or Georgia Tech's for that matter, Calvin Johnson is sitting like in his home in su- suburban he, Detroit, like are, hanging he, out yeah, with his family. He's at the Lions games because that's the best place to be right now in the NFL. Uh, anyways, Tech gets the ball back, uh, and we had one of our classic milk the clock all the way down to zero kind of possessions. Uh Jamal Haynes had plenty of good runs, and then eventually Haynes King snuck in for the another fourth and goal touchdown to end the half with like six seconds left. And we had double possession in this because we had the ball first to start the second half. And I feel like we'll talk about this, but it seems like this is where Buster got more into his bag in terms of play calling. Uh, Singleton had a really cool reverse to actually get the touchdown. Haynes had a couple of good throws, including a good one to Rutherford. Uh, and then we really punt, punt blocked uh, State on their next possession when we were up 21-3, and then Shelley got Finally got some semblance of a return this year, which was good to see. Uh, and then they, Georgia State just left Malik Rutherford like absurdly wide open, and we were up 28-3 to with 11 minutes left in the third quarter. And I immediately saw my phone when that's happened, and I was having flashbacks. I will not refer to the specific game that I was having flashbacks to. Uh, Georgia State got a long field goal in their next possession to make it 28-6. So in a moment where they needed to get some momentum, they weren't really doing that. The only real blemish of this game, I would say, beyond some nitpicks, is that Haynes King threw his first interception. Uh, it was the former jacket, Kenyatta Watson, that got him on a rollout to the right. Um, it looked like it was a good play by Kenyatta more than anything. The ball was placed in a good spot, just a good, good catch there. Uh, we should have had them down. We should have had them three and out, uh, but they caught us on an illegal substitution with bad subs going on. Uh, and then they turn into a busted coverage TD for Georgia State. They're only of the game. They missed it. They missed their uh, point after two point. Uh, and then at that point, we're talking late third quarter, early fourth, and we was pretty much smooth sailing from there. Uh, we used Alexander on a third and one instead of Jamal Haynes, which is cool to see. We got the season of Anthony Carey. We still have Georgia State on downs again with goal to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, Avery Boyd got a touchdown on a crosser to make it 35-12, and that was the last of the scoring. Then we won the Marta Bowl. 
Jack is going to keep pushing the Marta Bowl thing since he invented it. Um, and it got, <laughs> yes. to, to his credit, it got picked up by a lot of yeah, social media did. outlets and then not credited to him. So I got, I got <laughs> so, I, some people figured it out. Some Georgia State people figured it out, which I, I at least it got to both sides. I'm happy that it got to both sides of the coin here. Uh, so ready for the next one. Decent, decent. Maggie, uh, you're in the press box for this one. Anything interesting that you saw from your perch up there? I mean, I walked away from this game so excited that we didn't lose, which I know that's not like the hottest take in the world. That's fair. But I that's was totally like fair. That's totally on fair. cloud nine about the fact that we didn't lose. And like, we did a lot of things poorly. We did a lot of things well. I mean, what more can you ask for? You know, it's the second game of the season. I just, I was pleased, and I feel like that's a crazy take to be like pleased with the situation that was right. Yeah, with the performance that we gave on the field. We're talking about blemishes to our team that happened in a blowout win. Like, yeah. what the heck is this? What, what is this Georgia Tech team doing this very specific thing in our quote unquote? I mean, if we can call it, I would call it a rivalry game. The state treated it like one. So, so uh, it's a derby. It's a proper derby, considering yeah. that there's only like three miles of distance between literally. These two schools. Yes. <laughs> yes. Something like that. Um, it, it's funny you say it. Hey, man, I'm pleased that we didn't lose this game because I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> because all week and i think even during the first half when i after i finally got service after the first half because that somehow that stadium is still a cell service <laughs> black hole right uh, after like two decades of cell phones being in popular demand um like uh i i think the first Text There's that a, I they said. got a they got a 5G thing like literally at the library like we've got one of the- yeah I had to turn on 5G <laughs> I I need to send tech a bill for costing me seltzer <laughs> anyway um the first or one of the first messages that I sent back in our writers room Slack was like man Georgia State plus 22 feels like free money right now because at that point it's like 17 or like a 14-3 right heading into the half. And it was barely 14-3-2, right. considering that Tech had scored on fourth and goal to end the half. And I just and I, it was a very sloppy, like very just like the everyone had jet lag, right? Like somehow Georgia State had jet lag, the fans had <laughs> jet lag to a certain extent. Like it was just kind of disgusting for the entire second half. And then I think that score right at the end of the first half for Tech opens the game up. And I think, Jack, to your point, it's like Tech gets a little bit more into their playbook, makes some adjustments, um, and it turns into more of like a proper game in the second half. Right. Uh, and and Tech is able to do a lot more damage. I think if I had first and second half splits on our game on paper stuff, I would it would be a lot more purple in the first half and then a lot more green in the second half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as it stands, like overall, it's like very green for tech and very purple for, for state. But I think to state's credit, they did a lot. I, I think they were situationally poor. Or yeah. let me let me back up. I think their execution was bad in some spots. I think the red zone, they really struggled. And that's yeah. a credit to tech's defense too. Um, and on fourth down, they were super aggressive other than one spot, which we can talk about later on. Um, and they brought a lot of pressure, right? Like tech, at least to my eye, tech struggled to run the ball for vast majorities of that, like first half. And then they turned it on the second half, right? That That's just kind of what happens with game state, yeah. but like, and they got in Haynes King space a lot, like a lot more than Florida state. I noticed that. I, I, I noticed how many times he was scrambling and stuff like that on some of those throws. I mean, it happened on the, on the interception. I know there was some design rollouts and stuff like that, but it seemed like there was a, a little bit more chaos going on behind the offensive line than what we saw last week. I mean, it wasn't even like pressure proper. It was more also like they just got in his face, right? They were putting, mm-hmm. they got, they're really good at putting their hands up. They generated a lot of like passes defense or PBUs or whatever you want to call them. Like there was a couple of times where I felt like in this, like it was a 2017 Matt Ryan situation where mm-hmm. it would, the pass would get tipped and it might get just randomly picked off. Right. Right. Yeah. Like he was at threat for that a couple of times. And I just, 
had similar flashbacks to you. That it's, makes sense. But but yeah. to State's credit, like they did a really good job of getting their hands up on throws over the middle and just between the hashes and trying to prevent anything from really stretching the field and going outside. I think they did a really got good job of setting the edge. Like Tech was not really able to turn the corner that often on mm-hmm. State. Um, and as much as they were versus FSU, like I think they were able to get instead of the angle of attack being like three yards towards the end zone versus state versus FSU, it was like five yards towards the end zone. And then, oh, the DB or the linebacker isn't actually in the right place to prevent Jamal Haynes from turning back inside. Right. Right. So it was a really good defensive performance despite giving up 35 points. I don't know. Again, like it, this game was kind of disgusting. I it's did not amazing. feel super great about it. I just <laughs> I like that we won. I just didn't feel super great about the whole well, thing watching t- it back. T- tell, well, you, well, I was on the stadium, of course, but uh, tell me feels wise, like that first, first, I guess whole first half, did it feel like it was like a nervous energy kind of situation in the stadium at least? Like what, like I'm curious if the, how everyone was just feeling about the game externally maybe had some, uh, not maybe a direct effect on the game, but just like watching, if living through that in the moment, was it just like a uh, or a just like oh this is just a t- big it's a new weird game kind of thing I, I don't know really know what I'm asking but just like the in body experience what was going on there I personally was I was never worried that we were gonna lose per se like based off what we were doing mm-hmm. like as soon as we stopped them from scoring on like their first set of drives or whatever. I was like, okay, like, we're going to be okay. But like, how did they get down here so quickly? That, that was nerve wracking. And it was a little like, you know, the, oh my God, is this going to be Bowling Green Mm -hmm. again? Mm -hmm. Yep. But like, I I I think nerve wracking, nerve wracking is what I would, I would agree with for sure. It's like the result isn't necessarily, it's like, the result isn't necessarily in question. It's like how you get there is yeah. really what the concerning part for me, or, or like the nerve wracking part for mm-hmm. me was. And I also just really got super annoyed at the one person on Twitter that was just like, yeah, tech's not going to cover <laughs> tw- 21 and a half points. I was oh, like, God. sometimes these things just like the anxiety and stuff just works out of spite, you know, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. But I, I was I, very glad to see them covered by two points. Yeah. I, I, I appreciated the Twitter beef. There were some wild things said, but I mean, if people are listening that may have seen know what I'm referencing, like, I would say don't be mean to him about that. If you can, just it's weird. It's Twitter. No, game's yeah. over. Don't don't be annoyed. Like, don't be annoying just because yeah. Tech won. Like that's not fair. It was just some of the things are like that were said were just not based in rational if thought. If it's not based, if it's and not it was, based it in reality, it sounded like someone who was just very bored. <laughs> also, that people get bored on Twitter and then just continue using Twitter and it gets dumped. So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, oh shoot, I had another question. Okay, yeah, Maggie, or I guess, yeah, or for Maggie, but, like, when for you did it feel like we had proper control of the game? My guess would be on that second touchdown, because that was, seemed like an emblematic yeah. drive of ours where it just took a while. I, I'm i curious, like, why we even got to fourth down. I didn't see all those plays in the condensed game, so, like, wh- how did we get to fourth? How do we get to another fourth and goal situation at the one? I honestly don't remember, um, but... That is kind of when I was like, all right, like we're going to be okay. This might be closer than I want it to be, mm-hmm. but like we're going to come out of this. I think that when you were saying that it's about like how you get there, like I'm sure we're going to talk about this later, but there were some things that happened that was just like pure luck on our end. Like them, was that the two point conversion that they dropped or was that a touchdown? Two point like conversion the, was dropped on their, yeah, it was their second wide touchdown. open receiver. Yeah, I, I think yes. I have this written in here too. Like they, there's a linebacker coming across the middle that's in front of the path or like just offset from the where the ball is going. And then there's a DB that's probably like a yard and a half behind State's receiver. 
And it's there is a tunnel, like a straight up tunnel, a clear tunnel with no hands in between it where um, Christian Barilu, I don't know how to say his name, but um, puts that ball for his receiver and he just drops it. Like yeah. I, it's, it's an almost upsetting drop, but it like, <laughs> he just, he, it's put in a perfect spot for his receiver to get, get to him. And he just drops it. And they had a number of these plays where they call the right play, their execution, like it's everything but the finish, right? Mm-hmm. And, like the ball gets there on time. It gets there to an open receiver and the receiver just drops it. And they, it's at least three of them. If I went back and watched it, that they, they get in these situ- or state was in those situations. Yeah, and like that is concerning to me because like if those had gone the other way, like very this could have been a very different outcome, and yeah. we would not be as like happy as we are right now. So like that that's, is concerning, but like also that's Brent Key's problem, not mine. Right, and I feel like that speaks to the, also the quality of. Well, a of where Georgia State is not at right now. Granted, that was their. Yeah. This is literally week one for them. Like they have, they are just, and this is a brand new team in a lot of ways that it shouldn't be for first game of the year. Um, and we've had a week to polish off and things like that, and extra practice. But nonetheless, like we haven't cost ourselves in those situations either, where we're not taking advantage of what of those mo- kind of moments and yeah. executing better. Um, which gives me hope. That's what gave me up going into this game. It's like. We're not doing the crap that we were doing going into Bowling Green, or that happened during that game in particular, where we just and we were able to kind of create our own luck in in ways um, and force the issue in way better than we ever have been. And since any since at least since me and Maggie got to school in any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah. So, all right. Actually, what's next? Uh, I I have a couple of notes from the game on paper box score and the thing that stood out for me during this game, and I think I was I was telling you and Jake. Jack. Wow, that's hard to say. Um, <laughs> uh, like right after the game, I, I thought a lot of the fourth down decision making was pretty interesting and it kind of resembles what is starting to become a trend this year, I think, of coaches being a little bit more aggressive on fourth down than they usually are. Um, and I'm kind of looking forward to updating that article from last year um, hey. after these first couple of weeks. Uh, but I think to I guess to take away a little bit of credit first, I think some of those fourth down goes are pretty obvious, like fourth and goal from the one tech had that and state <laughs> had that. It's like, yeah. literally call your best one yard play. And, and that nearly worked probably for probably going to get it. And it nearly worked for state. They had us third and nine after they missed that, that, that yeah. first fourth down and nearly had us nearly had Shanahan punting from the back of the end zone, which that's a great, res- that's about as good a result you're going to get. Outside of that, and Haynes finally had a good. Well, that was his first like legit throw he needed to do. So, um, yeah, I get yeah, the point and there. Tech, Tech gets really lucky on those next couple of plays, I think, because it's like a one yard run, and then they break open on third and nine at the two with yeah. a twelve yard pass to Eric Singleton. So, like, I guess it's not luck. That's how they set it up. But yeah, it was like, covered. they he were was, able to break kind of out of a too. negative situation, right? Like, yeah. when you're that backed up, the most realistic next score is either a, is uh, for the defensive team, like either a safety right. or a, or a touchdown for the other team. Right. Like, it's 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 very rare that you you break out of that zone. Um. So keep that in mind. There, I think one missed call for a team that really needed to take every chance that they got for in state it was a fourth and two with like four minutes left in the fourth quarter. They kicked a, let me see if I can find it in the feed. They kicked a field goal from the four on fourth and two from the, <laughs> from text four. That is not good. I, I think the margin, the, the margin here between go and, field goal is not as large as I thought it would be. It's only about 1.7 points of win probability. But, like, you know you need points to win football right. games. And I guess, right? I guess I, I, there's that, and I guess it goes into the fact, like, at that point, they had seen themselves not get past this very particular situation multiple times at this point, too, which, I mean, is not perfectly measurable, I guess, in, in the calculator here that you're talk, referring to. Yeah, like, I mean, there's like a there's the, there's it's like the the game state adjustment stuff. effect, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, but 
I also subscribe to the you should never be kicking a field goal inside the inside the 10 such like <laughs> kind of theorizing here right, because right. that is surrendered to me especially when the game is pretty close right that's a that's a seven point game and everyone like you if state scores on that drive the entire stadium is sort of clenching and for right. whatever right. tech is about to do on their next drive right. and that's true that's yeah. true and Which so, I guess that's, I mean, I guess that's part of the cat goes there is like, do you get points on the board? Keep you guarantee it's a one score game. You guarantee yourselves the lead with a touchdown if you can stop them, but then also you got to stop them twice. So I guess that also kind of goes back to your argument of like, get your touchdown now because who knows? They literally might not get the ball back until there's seven minutes left in the third quarter with how we run our offense. Yeah. So, and and yeah. it's also like you've turned a one score game into a one score game. You've not, you've yeah, not yeah. really. Yeah. I, I think even sh- seeing here, like the win probability added to, for that field goal is 0.6%. You didn't even add a percentage <laughs> point of win probability. Like it's just such a bad decision. Like I, I don't want to excoriate them too much. Like I can, I understand. We are not football like, coaches. I think Jack, we just yeah, read like I, Jack, I think your point is totally sound that it's like a vibes base. Like, okay, we need the confidence of like knowing that we can score points, but also like, Come on, man. You, you need to score more points to win. Like, I, I right. can't help you. Um, right. A couple other things. State converted twice on fourth down, I think on the second to last or last drive of the game. I, I like, care about this. And then also, it is garbage time. Care about we were, this. That whole fourth <laughs> quarter was effectively garbage time, anyway. Yeah. So. It's, it's like, it's like very Ted Roof vibes, you know, like kind of bend, don't break, defensive failure on that one, but also right. like, literally doesn't matter so i'm not super bothered about it um state went for two down 16 uh i think this is the two-point call that we were talking about earlier right again didn't end up mattering but i think that's a really good two-point call again you know the like you do that early so you know what you need to get on a later drive i think that's pretty smart um penalties in this one i I don't know if we've mentioned them explicitly but this is the reason for a lot of sloppiness i don't Mm -hmm. have a I'd have to count go in and count by hand how many penalties there were, but Tech lost about two expected points on penalties and literally six actual points for a 60 yard Haynes King touchdown rush, which was very good, by the way. Like he the offensive run, line yeah. opened a big old hole for him to run through and he bounced it outside and, and was able to get to the sideline. And it got wiped out by a holding call, not out on the offensive line, which also had like a block in the back that went uncalled. Anyway, besides <laughs> the point, but like a second level holding call, which was super, super dumb. Right. Anyway, I think that that's kind of the main stuff that came out of the, the game on paper report. Again, like I felt a lot worse about this game from like a vibes based point of view then any of these statistics bear out like tax win probability in this game. And yes, they were favored by, by ESPN 19 and a half points, but tax win probability never dipped under 85% at any point in this game. So I should probably have a better attitude about this, but <laughs> also this was a very crappy way to get to a 23 point win. So to your, well, I'll, to your point, about take what just, you will from all of this information. <laughs> I scrolled through. It looks like we got seven. Um, and I think to your, like, it just feel, felt ugly point. Like, I that felt uglier to no one more than Brent Key by far. Like, that's... Yeah, stuff. I mean, he, he said does, it in he, the locker room. It was captured on video, <laughs> or, like, in the post-game, like, celebrate, like, yeah. locker room celebration video. He's like, yeah, there are things you guys have to work on next week. Yeah. It's like, that, generally, you don't want to hear that when you are when you win by 23, but, yeah. you know, he's not wrong. When you win the first ever Marta Bowl, you do not want Brent Key yelling in your ear. Oh, wait, never mind, I'm not going to do that joke anymore. By the, way, <laughs> by the way, if we're sticking with the Marta Bowl theme, someone, and probably, you know, the uh, nominal transit authority that's supposed to sponsor this, should reward the winning team with a massive, like, you know those big checks, like the... Like the Dude, this is literally what checks, I said. This is right? literally what I said yeah. in the tweet. I said that, it be like, like a get a golden card. breeze card. Yeah, <laughs> not even golden, just a massive breeze card right. that's <laughs> either gold or blue or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right? I, I think or just it, it's been d- dual colored or whatever. But yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Whatever. If Marta, <laughs> if Marta's executive marketing executives are listening, this is a free idea. Right. <laughs> Take the free idea. 
it's like you might be seventy million dollars uh, over budget on some of your projects. Mm -hmm. Like, take this free idea, and I think it will do, help. Do something. I did not do a copyright because I don't want to get into legal things with my own <laughs> transit authority in my city. Uh, anyways, I think um, they have way more problems to do. They, <laughs> yeah. I do not. That's it. I don't even want to. Uh, Maggie, I'm crowd wise. I this was. I was told by the S idea that they were expecting a much bigger crowd than. Per usual, I assume it was actually bigger. I, I'm curious just what the whole vibe was during the tailgate scene and just how ever how everything led up to getting into the stadium and things like that. Yeah. Um, that's the most people I've seen in Bobby Dodd outside of like a UGA game. Sweet. Probably ever. That's probably not right, but definitely like the most I remember seeing. Recent recently for sure. Yeah. Oh my god, um, I feel just like the Jakeness exuding out of me because he's not here and <laughs> I have to mention this. And I'm also the like the elder <laughs> statesman. You literally are today. Yes. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I'm older than him, so I guess it doesn't matter. But right. yeah, like, like I think it's within y'all's era of being in tech or covering tech, I think it is definitely one of one of the largest. It has to be, yeah. yeah. Um I have it the benefit also... of Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to talk about how you couldn't get anywhere in the stadium. Like you could not. They were being very strict about like what, which like obviously we have to go through a specific gate as like a media person, but like you couldn't move through the stadium like the way you normally can. Mm. Has it was it like this when we were good? No, and I, I just don't, don't know. know. I, I well, okay, I don't whoa, know. whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm not that old. Okay, like don't <laughs> don't put that that evil on me. But I mean, not that uh, good, but like better. <laughs> but it, yeah, I I think there are two things contributed to that. I think one, the way that the student section stuff was organized this time. Yeah, there seems to be a on, lot of kerfuffles with that. There, yeah, based on the feedback yeah. that I heard from a couple of people and. A feedback that I was seeing online, the student section security wristband ticket situation was very poorly handled for what was a over overly full student section, right? Like I yeah. think they said they announced that it was a complete sellout in the north end zone and there are a sizable portion of students in the south end zone. I've never seen the south end zone that full in yeah. a long time that's, for that matter. That's really cool. Um, that, yeah. Um, my point that I guess I was kind of out to is like, I, I think y'all are right. Like if there's one photo of looking at it's from the South end zone, heading towards the North end zone, looking at text huddle. And then with the student section, yeah. in the North end zone and the North it's, section yeah. behind it, it was a very <laughs> good photo, by the way. Um, I need yeah. to go find it again. Uh, but that image I think would not have been out of place from like the miracle on Techwood game, right? Like mm -hmm. that level of that lower and yes, it's a lower bowl. And yes, now I'm adding like modifiers onto what is like a mm -hmm. very cool moment, but like that, it, it was just a raucous crowd from that perspective. And I think if you're, this is something that we talk about with tech all the time is that the last four years, like the four mm -hmm. years of Jeff Collins were arguably the worst. Actually, I think literally the worst. They were the actual yes. Yes. They were the actual worst. Yeah. <laughs> in Georgia Tech athletics history, right? Like by mm -hmm. director's cup standings, it was the worst in athletic history. And if you're trying to create donors, future donors, you are doing a, those four years were a very poor job of it. And mm -hmm. football is the like, I guess hits the most people at once in terms of doing mm -hmm. that. If you are able to generate this kind of environment for future games, right? Not just at an, for an 8 p.m. kickoff, the first game of the season um, versus an in-state or, or an in-city opponent, right? If you're able to generate that kind of environment for, I don't remember what the other home games are, the Miamis, the UNCs, the VTs like the VMI, of the world. Yeah. yeah, I mean, VMI, like even that, if you're, I mean, it's, what is that like a noon kickoff like i think it's a yeah yeah i think it's a 3 30 3 30 better than noon I, yeah i sure. september noon kickoff gives me yeah i'm already sweating tough. thinking about it <laughs> um but like if you're able to generate that kind of crowd like and and also win you know win games not just over vmi but again the miamis the vts the, the, the like 50 50 games that we that we always talk about like 
that goes a long way into building that crowd. It's it's a self fulfilling prophecy. You want yeah. you need to generate a product that want keeps people coming back, and I think that atmosphere in that stadium it is very loud. Like I wore, I mean I wore I wear AirPods as earplugs, which is not not medical advice, but like <laughs> I it, I had to because it was actually loud. It the section that we were in was full. That's awesome. And I, I could look over at the student section and be like. I am concerned that there's going to be a crush because it was actually <laughs> super full. So again, like we talk about this all the time, you have to continue creating these atmospheres. You have to continue creating these moments. And I think people are juiced after the Florida state one, which yeah. I think if I go look at Florida state versus Boston college is not looking super great, but like mm-hmm. you have to continue creating those moments and, and keeping people coming back because that's how you generate current and future dump. Like I am more motivated today, despite the like the level of irritation that I have with this game, to buy a ticket for later like, this season. Again, we are talking right? about like, yeah penal- penalty problems in a blowout win. Like this is the stuff that you want to be building on top of if you're going to be making mistakes early in the season. Like that they they have yeah. set themselves up in a very good situation here in terms of everything we just talked about fan wise, experience. Well, I guess not experience wise, considering there's some work to be done there, but and also on field performance, like the. The uh, oh, dare I say the word? The alignment is a uh, aligning. It's it's doing the thing. I don't. I don't we need to move on before I get a <laughs> raging headache about the word uh, alignment. Next week, by the way, uh, September seventh, a noon kickoff in Upstate New York versus Syracuse. Uh, Tech is favored by three points going away uh, with an over under of sixty and a half points. Syracuse in week one, by the way. 38 to 22 winners over Ohio. Jack, you, you looked at the box score for this one. Anything stick out to you? Well, the thing is, is they got a new quarterback named Kyle McCord, who y'all may know because he played at Ohio State last year, and he is now Syracuse's starting quarterback. And he had a hell of a week or a hell of a game uh, on Saturday. He threw for 345, had four touchdowns, a pick, uh, half an EPA, half half a point added per play uh, I for our slack. No one likes playing against him in NCAA 25, which is obviously a perfect uh, thing to measure how good a player is. <laughs> uh, that said, Ohio State still had, you know, not Ohio, Ohio, not Ohio State, has still had nearly 50% success rate against uh, Syracuse's defense, which is good news for us in terms of, I think we'll be much more in Buster Faulkner's bag and what we're going to be calling play call wise. Um, I, I, I really want to win this game considering we didn't win last time we were up there. Also, I swear to God, if we wear blue uniforms up there, I'm going to be so mad, but that's beside the point. Uh, hey, 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 CFB 25, by the way, auto set Syracuse to blue uniforms and us to gold. Uh, I'm not right. saying it's predictive. I'm just saying. I know? would not mind if I would not <laughs> mind the, gold, the them rolling out the golds for this game. I preferred the white at all times, but if they do gold, not a bad game to do it in. But anyways, <laughs> um, they've got all that to say. They've got weapons, but they're beatable. Uh, maybe the, obviously Vegas has this as a three point favorite, which I think is I feel that feels about right. I would say for right now, it's like we're not. And I was looking at Kelly at K Ford's most recent uh metrics he's got us in the mid 30s right now which i think feels about right like i don't think we have and the ap poll comes out tomorrow we'll see where we get ranked and that's much more vibes based than metrics based if, but not where to hedge 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 if, <laughs> well i'm saying well to say look k ford having us in the 30s i don't want y'all's opinion on this too is that feels about right like we have had the win to deserve like being in the conversation at the very least of just national just attention and goodness of a football team but it's also just that one good win and we beat it and then we beat a brand a very young team and so we don't exactly we shouldn't be all the way up in the rankings but we should be right there on the doorstep of next set of considered consideration teams basically is my thought i mean they're gonna be like 27 if you if you count the number of receiving sure. votes like okay. i, I yeah. still feel pretty strongly about that one yeah yeah but- <laughs> Yeah, where you at, Maggie? Do you feel like I, mean, I asked the group last week, but like, where where does where does rankings in your head feel? Do you even want us to be ranked? I'll also, also ask that because I think that's a, <laughs> a separate question to also think about. That's a good question. Um, I feel like it depends on like I just looked at the Boston College Florida State score. Um, so if Florida State loses, you can't, uh, we kind of need them are, to win. We kind of need them to yeah. win to like make it a little bit better for this. I part. feel like yeah, like I feel like if they lose to Boston College, then that. And discredits are then I feel like yeah thirty that feels about right yeah 
Florida well, State for one quarter, by the way, zero percent success rate. Things are not going super great. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh god! I will say on there. There's a couple ways to think about this. Florida State winning obviously helps our immediate relative standing in the poll, whether it's ranked or receiving votes or whatever. But them losing greatly increases our odds at ACC title because odds are Boston True. College ain't going to run the table, and if Florida State's already <laughs> at two losses before we even get to a second ACC game, that makes it so much easier for us, Miami, Louisville. Uh, probably not North Carolina, but just that 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 next tier below that or Clemson especially to fight for that second spot. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. I feel like I kind of don't want us to be ranked. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it would feel like to be ranked. I don't think I've seen. I th- well, you know, I think I this is the last time. I, we I don't want it. Well, I think to I... carry to carry off of our general sentiment, like please don't lose to Georgia State. I also don't necessarily want to be ranked and play VMI and then yeah. be put in that situation, which kind of might inherently mean we lose to Syracuse. So I feel like depending on how we beat Syracuse matters in that calculation as well, because um, it will be a true our first true road game. Uh, and that is not exactly a, a, a friendly environment there in the Carrier Dome that has a different name now. Was it RCA? I don't even know what the actual name is anymore, but. Was it the so RCA the, Dome or is it now the RCA? No, Dome? the RCA Dome is the Colts' old stadium. Before oh Lucas my god, Oil. that's a different stadium. <laughs> so that's a Ooh, that's nice. an awesome <laughs> poll, by the way, because that's the Colts stadium that I grew up with. But I mean, yeah. no, it's the JCA Dome. It's not even the Carrier Dome anymore. Oh, it's I was the JCA one letter off. I was literally Dome. one letter off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, my recognition or, or going back into the archives, the last time I remember Tech being close to being ranked. <laughs> was tw- the end of 2016, and okay. I just looked this up. At that point, this was after the Tax Slayer Bowl in the final AP poll of the season. They were the second non-ranked team, okay. Um, so That's second receiving vote team. I yeah. don't think that they started 27 yeah. close to ranked. Um, also, 27 was not a great year um, for a variety of reasons, but like or 27, 17. Wow. Um, but yeah, it, it was not. Uh, yeah, but I think that's the closest since right after the Orange Bowl, um, which okay. is almost 10 years, literally about, no, almost 10 years ago now, which yeah. gives me an even greater headache. Um, a, a couple <laughs> more things just to actually talk about this Cuse game um, versus Ohio. Cuse's defense had four sacks, 10 total overall or 10 total tackles for loss uh, with a 16 percent havoc rate. Uh, in 2023, that would have been an 87th percentile performance. My assumption, and I didn't watch the game, so this is kind of shooting from the hip, but they probably stacked the box, especially more as the game developed, brought a lot of pressure, and dared Ohio to go over the top. Mm. And Ohio just kind of, they were really, really bad um, throwing the ball. Uh, the But what the thing that Ohio did really well was run the ball. They... Sixty-one percent of their carries were gains of four plus yards. They had basically one hundred and three second level yards or highlight yards. So once they got to the second level, they were ripping off runs consistently. So that's something to keep an eye on. Is that if they're going, it, it's weird. Like it's it's weird to sort of try to fit those two facts together, right? Stacking the box and running really well, mm-hmm. but. It works somehow, right? Um, on the flip side, Cuse really did not run the ball that well, or at least extraordinarily well. Um, yes, part of that is due to game state, but there's only 0.02 EPA per rush, a 51st percentile performance. So a couple of things to monitor. I imagine the defensive shape is a little bit different from from what my assumption is. But yeah, like I, I think the... Implied win probability based on the spread, I think, is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 62, 65 percent. And I feel pretty comfortable with that. It's like you don't really know where you're going to get out of Syracuse. Tech is like people know the most about tech of any school in the country right now. Like, yeah, (laughs) but like 50 or like 65 percent feels right. It's like they're better, but like by how much is a question mark. Right. Right. I think a couple of things I'm thinking of is one. Well, that's just fit. Cowboy Court is going to be probably the best quarterback we played all year, considering DJ just did not look good in the slightest against us. Um, and Georgia State was Georgia State. They even, as we, as Maggie, I saw you tweet, Jack, Zach Gibson played a snap, uh, which I'm it was sure, great. 
I, I, I'm glad it was just the one snap, but it, it happened. Jeff Collins, it legend, Zach Gibson. Just, I looked around. I was like, did I just make that up? Like he's already out of the game. I know. I was, I was so I, shocked. I was, I was kind of sad. Dude, I, kind of, I want to see him play. Uh, uh, Christian Verilu took a um, a not gratuitous, particularly uncomfortable shot to the groin and had sure to come did. out for a play. <laughs> I was down on my end of the hey, field. Honestly, uh, was... honestly, that's a fantastic recovery time. That's that's that was impressive. I'll give him that. Uh, uh, that could. Uh, that... Yeah, I see. It now. was bad enough, uh, not to be crass, but it was bad enough that someone <laughs> like a, a couple of seats down from me was like, "Don't they wear cups to prevent prevent this?" And uh, because he's in like serious pain, like football rolling players on the ground. As if, if I'm correct, football players famously don't, uh, which makes no sense to me, and I would. I played baseball all the time, and even if I was playing left field, I would still wear one. So I'm like, you just, you just never know. You just never know. That be all of that being said, Zach Gibson comes in for one snap. All he does is hand the ball off, and then jogs back to the sideline. Uh, it uh, was hilarious. Uh, uh, my um, other, uh, my other fact that just popped up in our Slack, which is just too good to not mention, uh, Georgia Tech has played twice since August 17th, and we have more wins since August since August 17th than the Chicago White Sox. You have one <laughs> since August 17th. <laughs> oh, man, on that note, talking about Chicago <laughs> baseball, of all things, let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back to talk about volleyball and a little bit of fall season golf back in a tick. Well, this is usually Jake's spot, talking about Chicago stuff and Section 103 in some form or fashion. Uh Steven was out. We, he, he just sent me, Akshay and Jake, some fantastic volleyball shirts that we're going to wear. If you can get your hands on the Point Tech gold volleyball shirt, you should do that. You can buy it in O'Keefe, if I'm not mistaken. You can buy Section 103 gear in Bobby Dodd Stadium now, which is new for this year. So if you want a $0 shipping fee, go to a game and get it there. Or you just spend 80 bucks, you can use the code FTRS for 10% off, and he'll give you free shipping right there and then. Uh, the design's are fantastic. You can get your Junior's Grill shirt. You can vote on the next shirt that he's going to do. Um, I, I have a new goal in my life, and that is to own every single T-shirt that he has. Um, that's going to take some time, but uh, I, I all of them are that good. I would wear literally any single one of the shirts that they make, and that is not a joke. And they're good material as well. Uh, they sponsor some of our articles, and we're still so thankful that they do. They sponsor this podcast. You can get there at section103.com. That is the digits 103 or Twitter at section103. Uh, they're on Instagram. Same handle. Shall we volleyball? Let's volley. Uh, first game of the 2024 season for Georgia Tech volleyball. A, a wonderfully compelling for the neutral three to two loss to UCLA, or a UCLA team that was just on the cusp of the top 25 and is now in the top 25 uh, as of the like fresh off the presses, maybe like two hours ago at Coaches Bowl. Um, other results from this weekend, a 3-1 victory over New Mexico State and a 3-0 sweep of Coastal Carolina earlier today. But I was on site. Jack is was not for the first time in a long time for a I volleyball game, but so I was on this. site for the, for the UCLA <laughs> game. A packed house, a truly packed house, a completely sold-out building. I was worried the fire marshal was going to give the stadium a call and say, no, 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 no. You cannot put this many people in a building because it was very loud and very, very full to the point where me, Jake and Jake's wife had to go sit on the other side uh, from where we usually sit oh my God. in the student section, right behind the uh, press box and uh, within a uh, gaggle of very, very old donors, which also made me feel very, very old for not being able to sit with students. But that's besides the point <laughs> and an existential crisis waiting to happen. But yes, back to the game, a a wonderfully, like seriously, a wonderfully competitive game. I think if you caught this on TV, and I think it was ACC Network Extra, because ACC Network had some of the like, pre not preseason but like early season tournament stuff going on with like Louisville and Stanford and, and Wisconsin and all that stuff um and probably football that night too um uh it was really really fun uh very frustrating if you're a tech fan because I think some of their early, like a lot of the early season rust was showing and they had a couple of sloppy moments that really cost them points 
Um, I think whenever it got down or, or UCLA's lead in a set got to like five or six points in a normal set or, or two or three points in, in the final set in set five, um, Tech just had a lot of trouble stringing together points in order to launch a comeback. The pacing on this game was just really, really miserable, especially towards the end. Like a lot of reviews, a lot of timeouts, especially in that fifth set. Every and, and to to everyone's credit, like the actual athletes and the coaches' credit, like it was poorly paced, and all these reviews needed to happen because it was just such a close game, wire to wire. Right, we went to a couple extra points at, at the at the end. Like it could not have gotten closer. I, I think in terms of actual competition, it felt a lot like last year's uh, McCamish game to open the year. Um, like blocking was in the right spots, but got really unlucky with just where the ball wanted to bounce. One or two opposing players really did a good job of putting a lot of power behind the volleyball and tech just did not really keep up with it. Tech was in the, I I was looking at this prior to us recording and prior to today's game versus Coastal Carolina um, per evolve, which is one of our volleyball providers. They're great. By the way, you should check them out at evolve.net. That's evolve with two L's. Um, Tech was in the first percentile in the nation in terms of luck and the 33rd percentile in terms of points or like a a tax block rate. Yeah. You can like chat sample size or whatever, but that's ridiculous. Like it was really, really bad. Um, And they just got really, I I think they just like some of these moments get made sets one, four and five, just get away from them at times, but they laid the hammer down in two and three. And I think there's some, there's some building blocks here for a very, very good, Team Jack, I don't know if you watched uh, chunks of this one while you were recapping the game later on, but anything that you noted as well? I sadly missed basically all this. I was getting updates from uh, our newest writer, Will Fuss, who has the, uh, even though my name is credited with the recap, it is him that wrote it. You should go check that article out. Um, He's a lovely writer. Um, I I think as I was tracking it, the thing that I noticed more was the set, like how we, how much we won the second set by and just the off and on switch. I think one thing I'll note is I was listening to uh, the uh, listen to today's match on the radio and caught Kurt Hoyt's interview with Michelle and he was, she had mentioned that just it is a thing in volleyball where you just kind of just turn off for a set and you're just gone. And it's just, you just kind of like black out and then you just back the next set and things start rolling. Um, it is just kind of the way it is for whatever reason, just stuff like that happens. And some teams just lose it for a set and some teams and you get teams go crazy. Uh, or you stayed in all the way, and that's that kind of applies for just about everyone, though. Like the the reason the top teams are the top teams is they just never have those moments, and it's hard to go a whole season and not have those moments. I mean, it's kind of been a thing in the opening series. Like last year, I think was special in that we like got through some really good teams early and had that confidence, and we were on the other side of that coin where teams were not having their best moments early season, and we were able to take advantage of that. And that's not where we were now. UCLA got ranked today. So I, I, UCLA is, they're a g- very good team. Like the fact going to five against them is not an unreasonable match, regardless of where this thing happens either. Um, so in terms of like, that sucks that we could not get this done. Absolutely hate that. Like we should, they're very rarely, I think, should we ever lose in O'Keefe unless it, with full rest, with a off seasons full of rest, especially. Uh, so that part's disappointing to me, but in general, uh, it's also the first game of the year against a hard team and you have not worked out any kinks yet. Like there's these exhibition games, are only exhibitions. That's not the real deal. So that there's a lot of forget. There is so much forgiveness to be had here in, in general, but it, as a whole, I, it, it sucks that we, I'm glad the environment was a, your classic O'Keefe big time game environment though. I think that shows the program is still as strong as it ever will be, or it has been, I should say it'll get stronger. Yeah. A couple other notes coming out of this too. Um, Liv Moggridge was in the game. She was there. She was playing. Like, I think she was in, in the normal rotation, but also she was still, it was a rotation, right? She was coming out of the game a lot for some of the different sets. She was coming out with, on, um, she was coming in only when Tech had the ball on serve. Seemed a lot like rotation to me, but especially knowing that Tech has struggled on the block last season and struggling on the block and this one at least from a luck perspective it was interesting to see her come in and out i think i would like to see a little bit more of her up front um jake's uh, what i'm gonna dub jake's remote take 
because he's not here to really explain this one, but I think this is completely legitimate. Um, Eloise Suarez looked a lot more at home uh, in the system than uh, Luana Emiliano at the center position, I think. And That's... that makes sense too, because yeah. Suarez had a basically a whole, like, effectively a whole season split with D'Amico to learn the system in Emiliano. That was her first, that was probably one yeah. of the best teams she's ever played ever, considering she was playing at Rio Grande Valley last year. And so you don't get to run into teams like this all the time in your conference or just in your non con. So I totally understand how that makes sense for this particular instance. Yeah. And I, I think part of that too is I was talking to Jake about this. It's like sub substitution effect or like adjustment effect, right? Most of Suarez's time was after the first set. So you have that first set in order for um, like they, they, for tech to get some data on UCLA, make some adjustments. And then Suarez comes in and then is able to, before UCLA adjusts to her, is able to make some noise and get a little bit more comfortable. And, and I think that's part of it. Uh, also, Suarez so still being in that second unit now with Laura Fisher instead of uh, Larissa Mendez, because now Mendez is in the first unit uh, with the first part of the rotation. I think that also helps, right? Similar substitution effect there. Um, the only other thing that, that stood out to me from, from this game is that Kamaro Tene did not cover herself in glory the second or the, or the final two sets of this game. It was uh, a little frustrating, I think. Just it's kind of just to see her like continue to struggle and not get pulled out. I think tech needs her to be good um, and operating at the same level as Bianca Bertolino in order for the season to go well. But this yeah. one instance was where she, I mean, she was struggling a lot. I think she turned around the other two games. Um, that's what our friends at Evolve uh, have kind of pointed out, but uh, in their stat sheets. But still, like not a yeah, great it was fine. performance for her in that in that first game. Thankfully, New Mexico State, Coastal Carolina are not a, not the hardest of opponents in general. Uh, Mendez got twenty three kills against New Mexico State, which is her career high. In the first ever game we played New Mexico State in volleyball, in in fact, uh, so that was fun. Good to see her. And those are the kind of games you want to see somebody putting up those just wildly high numbers, just get hot and just keep beating a team that's much easier to beat than our average ACC opponent. So that was fun. Uh, and then Coastal today. Uh, Pretty tight in the first set, pulled away at the right at the last minute, as we should. Just demolish them with the second set. And then we were down like 15 to 10 in the third and then rallied. And I think we won like 25, 21 or something like that. Like went just went on a big old streak and took that took care of that match, which is fun. Good good to see them just not waste time and just get it get it over with when they realized they were down. Uh it's a lot of rust. I think that's the kind of the summary for me this weekend. It's like yeah, it's fair. there's yeah. a lot of rust to overcome. And and I mean, these are a different caliber of opponent. Than what we used to see. I wish these came before the UCLA match. Like I would have wanted to play UCLA today instead of Friday. But I mean, yeah, I would have wanted to get in sync too. And and before playing UCLA, I I think, but I think overall, and and we talked about this before the season too. Like this is a different quality of opponent that's coming to O'Keefe the first weekend of the year, rather than you know not to poo poo the the other opponents that we've had, but like. Coastal Carolina, there's like a gulf of difference between Coastal hey, Carolina oh yeah, oh yeah, and yeah. Alabama A and M, right? Like, right. I I remember like 2016 and 2017 starting the season off with like Alabama A and M, Alabama State, like games that we probably would not count towards, like almost didn't count towards our almost yet, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it'll be different, and they got to play those. And Kalia knows this, like they have to schedule hard on purpose to for RPI purposes and a bunch of other stuff, and they want to make sure they get challenged early as well. So they can learn about themselves too. Like you kind of need these as learning tools, whether whether you win or not, it matters. But to 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 some extent, finding what it exposes in you is more valuable than the end result. That's early in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, couple so. couple final notes uh, before uh, we start wrapping up. Bertolino's like power serve that we saw come out last year. I think it's a, it's a little rusty to start off the year. It's kind of a coin flip whether it. Breaks the yeah. net. Yeah, she's, she's been working on it. I mean, she, Rod asked about that the, at the press conference last week, and she's like, she's trying to get it more in the court more often. But that was still a, an issue today as well. Like, it's just what she had one stretch where it like kind of got us a few points, but yeah, it's still just like 
it's a, it is a high risk, high reward serve. And yeah. Really and I mean, I think we didn't see it dialed in until later in the season where I think it was that Louisville game where she oh gets God. on serve and then gets rips off like six or seven points. Maggie, when I tell you, I've never lost my hearing more mm-hmm. at Georgia tech or just in general than when she laced face, when she laced four aces in a row to close out the first set against Louis, like I lost my, like, I mean, you, you were, I know you were like that when Harvey had that tackle, and, and you started cheering a little bit. Like, I was 10x that in the moment. And <laughs> thankfully, no one cares, no Keith, because like everyone is biased in there. Like, yeah, yeah. no one, no one cares at all. But my God. Yeah. No, but yeah, I mean, Berlin, it's a high risk, high reward serve. She's going to get, it'll get better, of course, like games, as you said, knocking off rust. So. Uh, uh, speaking of Bertolino uh, and Otena, just to double back a second, uh, not a lot of backcourt action from them. Not a lot of like the power, free swinging stuff that we have been accustomed to seeing in years past. And I think that I'm like starting to think that's more of a stylistic difference between these two players versus I think it is the Leah Bergman's is. of the world and the Mariana Brambias of the world. Um, so yeah. that's. I think that's, I, I, that's also a factor. They just don't want to, they ha- didn't get a lot of opportunities to swing free and, and they just also didn't, right? It was a lot more off speed. Yeah. Um, folks, um, talking about rankings again, UCLA, like you said, Jack is now ranked. They're number 25. Um, Tech is down to 19 in the coaches' poll. And fun fact if you want more information about why the schedule is so daunting, Tech will play numbers three, four, five, 10, 14. 15 and last week's number 25 before the season is over and has already played this week's number 25. So this incredible stuff. Is, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's freaking dumb. Stanford, freaking Stanford. Anyways, it's an insane slate. Uh, and, but you know, they ask for it and if they, uh, hit the bar, they make the tournament. Right. So it, yep. it's, it's a good setup for everyone involved next weekend for attack. They will travel to Provo, it will face off against Lipscomb and then the aforementioned, I think that was the number 10, no, the number 14 team in the nation, excuse me, BYU uh, on Saturday. So that is about it for volleyball's first week of action. Jack, what's on the docket for uh, for golf? They are about to get going with the fall season. Uh, we are not with Christo Lamprecht anymore. He has graduated. So that era, the best, literally the best ever tech player in Georgia tech golf history has now since uh, moved on, but we still have the reigning individual national champion on the roster. And that is Hiroshi Tai. Uh, we got Ben Reuter on the roster this year, Cal Fondno, Carson Kim, Aiden Tran, all back uh, and Brady Rackley at the fourth. He registered, I believe last year, we picked up a couple Swedes that is, we, uh, this is our new recording recruiting portal, Swedish golfers. Uh, and they're doing pretty good right now. If you watch the, uh, watch the uh, PJ tour, cause Ludwig Oberg is a, uh, Killing it right there, right now. Uh, we got Albert Hansen and Diedrich Ringval Begson. Those are their names. Uh, we will see how good they are. Uh, Reuter is back after a red shirt year, and they're going to be at the Visit Knoxville Collegiate this Saturday. Oh, I drove to Knoxville today. That's cool. Uh, cross country wise, uh, they had their opening meets. Their opening meet at Kennesaw State, the Stan Sims Cross Country Opener. It is just a Georgia event. It is us, UGA, Emory, Bruden Parker, and Kennesaw State. So we're not talking heavy competition. Uh, it is very much a tune-up kind of warm-up warm up event, uh, but we won pretty convincingly. John Higginbotham won on the guy's side. His first ever win in an event. He got, what, did, got the race down in 19 minutes and 20 seconds. Devin Wade of Tech got third, and then we swept the podium on the women's side. Mary Brady uh, won at 17 minutes and 45 seconds. Drace Driscoll got second, and Kate Dortberg got third. That's so cool. Like a, a, fr- a, a literal friend of mine and then someone who grew up in my neighborhood winning this event. It's all coming full circle for me. Uh, my only note on this cross country thing is I didn't know that Bruton Parker existed until I saw it in Same. this. No uh, way, this y'all write-up. never been. To... Y'all haven't oh. heard of Bruton Parker. El- please enlighten us, Maggie. What, what are we guys? Missing out on? My high school used to have a basketball camp there, and it oh. was where the it? dirtiest. I don't. Oh, I, I pulled it up, but I will get. I will spell? say. <laughs> Okay, I will give you, let's okay. see, a, I will allow you to guess what the nearest major city is. I will give you a hint. It's below the fall line. It's south oh. of the fall line. Maggie, Maggie, finish what you were going to say. Like, what was the, the camp? Oh, there were slugs in the showers. On oh, the my God. So then we stopped going to basketball I, camp there. Okay. All right. So nearest, 
You said 50 mile radius, you said? Uh, look, Yeah. you get uh, if you get either one of these two cities, I will be extremely impressed because I would never have gotten them. It is going to be a blind guess See, for you. I'm happy by Okay. my I'm happy my current job has me finding out what the names of all the Georgia counties are. So I've by Georgia geography has picked up surprisingly well in the last year or so or the last few months. I am gonna go with the town of Tifton, Georgia as the as a remotely close one. All right, Um, the fact that I have to scroll uh, to find Tifton <laughs> is not really helping your matters here. okay, never mind then. I will. I'm going to say Albany. Oh, it's good. Uh, it is not Albany. It is legitimately, and I think I have this straight up, it is almost equidistant between Macon and Savannah. The nearest Oh. other, like, Oh, reasonable Swainsboro? size... might be well i mean it might be lions but the that i know of reasonable size <laughs> that's closest is probably statesboro All right, I'm looking at it. Oh, it's in Mount Vernon, Georgia. it's in Okay. mount vernon georgia Okay, which is a so city we're talking again i have literally never heard of that every Guys, state's got a mountain I'm so right embarrassed. This is my neck of the woods. Literal. maggie oh my god <laughs> this Whoops. every every state's got a got a got a mountain burden but we're okay let me i'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna just read off some city names here uh oh vidalia is over there okay so we're near vidalia and we are oh it's near a town that i found out about just searching google maps randomly when i was like eight santa claus georgia go look up santa claus Ah, georgia uh, yes. because all of the Santa roads Claus, Georgia, are thematically a city that named I am totally as familiar with. they are all thematically named exactly what you think they would be named uh Petros, Georgia, Higston, Georgia, Kibby, Georgia, Stucky, Georgia. Oh, Stucky. Stucky's oh, we we my family makes a beer with the Stuckies, actually. Um Uvalde, Georgia, Austin, oh man, and Center, Georgia. You know, we got all these crazy names and then Center. We got Center, Georgia. There's between Georgia, up in up in You between also, Athens and Atlanta. Oh, this I we by this the way, is a new you pod also segment. have Charlottesville, not Charlottesville. <laughs> oh, I see that. Charlotte, you have Charlotte. Charlottesville. Charlotte lived there, not the Charlottes, just Charlotte lived there. <laughs> oh And my Tallahassee, god. Georgia. Anyway, fascinating, fascinating state. This I, I just I learned something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also glad we got to do a uh, a bit of trivia in the absence of. I know. We managed to do a whole geography bit without Jake. This is uh I'm sure he's he's gonna gonna probably enjoy enjoy listening this to this. He really to this will. back. Uh, Um he'll be back next week. Uh timing didn't work out because holiday weekends are weird and stuff like that. So scheduling Maggie, thank you. scheduling is super fun but jack maggie thank you for joining me tonight jack where can the people find us on the internet If you want to find us, we got usually something coming every day on the website on fromtherumbleseat.com pertaining to either football or volleyball when games happen. Or me and Maggie will have women's basketball when it comes November, December, winter time, which is I always enjoy going to those games. It's 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 a blast. The team may not be the best all the time, but it's always fun to be there. Anyways, uh, you can email us at, at from the rumble seat dot com, from the rumble seat at gmail dot com. Uh, if you have mailbag questions, we are still at, uh, accepting applications if you want to write for the site. Uh, we there. I you know we especially would love some people to help with like softball and the non rev stuff because I think we're we're getting pretty full on the football side, but maybe men's basketball as well. Twitter wise, I am at FTRS or we are at at, at FTRS blog. Jake is at, at Jake Grant ninety eight. I am at at Jack Nicholas. Maggie is at something. Is it just Maggie Doster? Am I am I making that up? It's, I'm pretty sure it's just Doster underscore Maggie, Doster but underscore I Maggie. don't even Okay. actually know. Okay, well, it's somewhere. Um, uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, there is an Instagram account. I, me and Maggie forgot that even exists. I think at this point, but it's there. Uh, This you is can a listen. great social media, social media person. We're just being honest. We're just being honest with ourselves here. Uh, you can listen to this podcast on YouTube as well. And if I happen to catch a cool moment on campus, I sometimes post it uh, to the YouTube channel as well, just for posterity's sakes. You can listen to this podcast also just wherever there's podcasts, Spotify, Apple. It's all there. Thanks for listening to us, Maggie. Thanks for filling in. Have a good night. Go Jackets. Oops.